Hi, my name is Christina. I'm your librarian here at Christina's Bookshelf, and today I am bringing you Magic Bitter, Magic Sweets, Charlie in Holmberg. This is the first book of hers that I've read, so I have nothing to kind of compare it to. So it's a clean slate for me, and it's going to be a clean slate for us. When I saw the blurb of this book, I was really excited because when I when I dive into fantasy, a lot of the times it's YA, but this is general adult fiction, so it was written for adults, and that is fantastic. And this was a fun story to kind of like put on the shoes of Marie, the main character, and then go and figure things out. Now the one thing that's great about fantasy is that the author gets to create a whole new world, universe, everything. The bad thing for me uh, coming and telling you about this is the, that the names created, I don't know if I'm going to say this right. So I greatly apologize, Charlie and everybody involved, um, if I fumble the names. The outline per se of Magic Bitter, Magic Sweet is that Marie kind of lands on the streets of a small town called Carmine and Eris, one of the townspeople, finds her on the side of the road. Marie has no memory of who she is, of anything before the moment that she kind of comes to. Eris and her husband Frank kind of take her in. All she really finds out about herself for a while is that she loves to bake and create things and she has this magical talent that she can kind of like instill and put in emotions and feelings into her baked goods so like she can make a chocolate cake that when you eat it you think of love or you have tranquility or peace or courage and so she puts all these things into her baked goods how she feels and sometimes she can feel bitter and the bitterness will go in and she has to toss it out at the beginning we kind of get to figure out a little bit of who Marie is and what Marie knows which is absolutely nothing. Talk about like a horrible way to wake up anywhere and remember nothing. One day the town gets invaded and a whole bunch of people are kind of taken and are going to be sold. Marie is picked up and the person that picks her up says he knows her and she is like how do you know me and he won't give any answers whatsoever. While she is in his care this kind of phantom spirit ghostly creature appears to her and in my mind, I called him Fael, and I think at times I called him Fael and Fiel. Um, I guess it was whatever I was in the mood for at the moment. He knows her, knows her previous life, but cannot give any answers. She has to figure this out herself. I mean, talk about the immense stress level. You wake up, you don't know who you are, you know you can bake these goods, now you've been taken from the only home that you know, and your captor is, I don't know, maybe insane, maybe like schizophrenic. Now you have this ghostly apparition kind of person coming to you and saying, figure it out, figure it out. You need to figure this out. And I can't just, oh my gosh, like I'm trying. Can you give me anything? And everybody's like, no. And you want me to figure this out, but you can't even give me like clues. And so this whole story, we're trying to figure out where did Marie come from? Who is she? And we get just little tidbits here and little tidbits there. And it's so fascinating. The fantasy that's put into this is so great. And the things that Marie's captor has her do. And just watching who she becomes and picking up the clues and trying to get there before she does. And everything in the story is just intertwined and intertangled with each other and there's webs and networks and it's so interesting to see how Fiel and the captor know each other and who they are to each other and who they are to Marie. While we're on this journey, it's, I mean, I wouldn't say it's self-discovery, but it's kind of interesting because once we figure out exactly what happened, now she has a whole different perspective to look at it. And it's really interesting to watch how she does this and how she moves forward. One of the great things about Magic Bitter, Magic Sweet, is kind of at the end, yes, you could build on this story, but I was honestly just content. Like, I was happy. I was joyous. I was okay like I am at peace with this story I enjoyed being at the end and kind of taking that breath of just happiness because this entire book is just like 
okay, we have this. What are we going to do now? This is going on. How are we going to do this? And you have the anguish of Marie not knowing who she is, but you have the anguish of uh, her captor of knowing who she is and the struggle that he's going through. And then you have Fial knowing who she is, and but he can't say anything to her. And so you can just kind of like feel the pain and the animosity and the hurt and the turmoil and just the angst of what's going on here. But you can also feel like friendship and kinship and love, S something greater than love and persistence and patience. Once you get to the end, it's just kind of like, <sighs> what a journey. Oh my gosh. I honestly don't think I can rave enough about this. Everything about it was amazing. There's, I think, quite a hidden gem in here of a fairy tale. And to see it kind of unfold was fun. There's nothing I didn't like about Magic Bitter, Magic Sweet. This is definitely a five-star read for me. Magic Bitter, Magic Sweet comes out on June 28, 2016. Once again, this is by Charlie N. Holmberg, and it is published by 47 North which is kind of Amazon sci-fi, sci-fantasy publishing network. If you've liked what you've seen here, please like the video and leave a comment. Also, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and I will leave those links down below. If you have a book or an arc you'd like me to review, I will also leave my email address down below. Magic Bitter, Magic Sweet, five amazing stars. Rings in the sky. Just everything and anything you could want. Five. Bye. Hi, my name is Christina and I'm your librarian here at Christina's Bookshelf. And today I'm going to talk to you about Jack of Thorns by Amelia Faulkner, the recently released by Love Light Press on May 3rd, 2016. So I'm a little, sorry I'm a little late for getting this out to you. However, love this, love this, love this. I am probably going to do a little bit of gushing all over the place here because one, I super, super, super love fantasy. Two, I super, super, super love this book. I honestly think that Jack of Thorns was like one of the best 